Join us at the Reconciliation Ambassadors Believers Assembly as we explore the profound theme of the futility of human endeavors. Drawing inspiration from Ecclesiastes, we contemplate life's fleeting nature, encapsulated by the term vanity. Let's delve into the essence of transience and the pursuit of enduring significance together. In Jesus' name, our eternal of faith, the hour has come again to hear from you. Father, speak out yourself unto your people in Jesus' mighty name. Give us understanding. Let the entrance of this world give us life and understanding for every one of us. Your name be magnified forever, my Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are welcome to another time before the Lord. Uh, a series of uh, the futility of human endeavor. Last week we looked at the part one. And today we want to look at the part two of the series. Don't forget that we are still in the introductory part of uh, this uh, world. Then we looked at a few things last week that uh, uh, the preacher himself has, has coined by Ecclesiastes from chapter 1 to chapter 12 himself has said. And we looked uh, look at some things that constitute vanity of vanity in life. And the Lord will give us <clears throat> understanding to know that everything in this world is temporary in Jesus' mighty name. So we want to look at some other areas in life today that we can liken, we, we can take the, the uh, subject matter of vanity to. And it, again, our anchor scripture is as we had it in the first one, because we are still, we are still part of what we did in the part one. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verses one to three, and uh, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12, verses 1 to 8. And then we look at chapter 1, 1 to 3, just like we saw it. So, the word of the preacher, the son of David, came in Jerusalem, verse 2, vanity of, of, of vanity, saith the preacher, vanity of vanity is all is vanity. And verse 3, what profit? Had a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Part of this, the nothingness in this world is what will make some people to lose their eternity. May it not be you, may it not be made in Jesus' mighty name. When the time comes for, for them to go and uh, worship, they wouldn't have time. When the time is right for prayer, they don't have time for prayer. For any kingdom advancement under us, they don't have any time for it. I, I hope they will have time for, uh, for that anyway. Of course, you don't even need to create time for that one. It has been scheduled. It has been appointed unto man. Once to die, it has been, it's an appointment. Death is an appointment. And it's, it is better we start realizing it now. It's an appointment. It's not an appointment you can miss. You cannot miss that appointment. You must meet up that appointment at the, at the right time that are the appointed unto you, which unfortunately I don't know, you don't know. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I enjoy everyone to read through the whole books of Ecclesiastes to obtain wisdom. That is to, that's the word. That's the word there. I want them to obtain wisdom. You know, related to the concept of vanity, uh, 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 vanity of vanity. That is, when we are reading the book, we must prepare our our mind for all the, all those subsections that we have in the twelve uh, chapter. For example, we have vanity of wisdom. Oh, his, his wife, his wife, is intelligent. After some time, you go. What has error? It is wisdom of error. That killed him. It is the wisdom of Pharaoh that killed, although people helped him to kill himself. People, uh, people, people helped Aaron to kill to kill himself. Well, oh, it is the voice of God. Those of them, the, the king said something that was very fascinating. 
Oh, yeah, in the voice of God, not of men. And uh, Aaron was now, was now making a guy, yes, it's me. Yes, it's me. Uh, that's why I said, when we get to heaven, if, if we ever, if we ever, I'm not here to judge anybody. When you see him, ask him what, what became of him. When he talked, and, and the, the, the angels of the Lord beat him, and one started coming out from a living soul. Although once he died, he has not, he, he, he's no longer a living soul. But he, he, there, is an, there is an estimated number of days that so a corpse can live before worms start coming up. But immediately, the angel beat him, worms started coming. Why? Because he did not glorify God. And it is people, it is people, hey, it is voice of God, not of men. Voice of God, not of men. And the inability, his inability to refute that, no, 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 it's only God, it's not me, that's what kills him. May our wisdom in quote not kill us in Jesus' mighty name. So everything we are doing, we must be very, very careful. We may, we may, we may, we, we, we may say that we are the one that uh, there's something we call atamatashi. There's two atamat as a human being, except one to deceive ourselves. We do apologies to the, the, the self that believe that they are atamatashi. They may be atamatashi, I don't know. But that, that only atamatashi that I know is God. So if you now say because of your wisdom, anything you say, yeah, anything you say we always come to, to pass. It is only to the extent that you are living. By the time you are no longer, you are no longer living, that's the end. And Lord will give us even understanding to understand that concept in Jesus. In wisdom, that could be vanity. I am not saying, don't misquote me, I'm not saying that wisdom is uh, bad. Even the Bible enjoyed us to, to, to pursue after wisdom. To pursue after understanding. But by, by the time we now dedicate the whole of our life to, to wisdom, wisdom, without God, I pray that we will not crash out in Jesus' mighty name. Vanity of uh, wisdom. That is, uh, even, even uh, this uh, Solomon, even this Solomon, you can see, we, see, we can see what became of him, despite all his uh, wisdom. He has a wisdom, and God gave him wisdom, and at a time, he amassed so many personal things for himself to the extent that uh, he now forgot that the Lord that gave him uh, wisdom. You can see one of the vanity of wisdom there. That is not to say that some people did not come with that, did not achieve that wisdom, and, uh, and the hand went with that uh, wisdom. God has done it. He will tell you that uh, the Lord, and you will know yourself that the Lord was, was with him, and so many other so many, so many other uh, uh, people. As for, uh, you can study the life of Joseph too. You see that the wisdom of God are always on, on, on of, uh, the, of God. Our, our master, Jesus Christ, is wisdom personification. You know, but what we are saying is that we should not, we should not rely on the power of our own wisdom. The power of our wisdom. Just like uh, the rich fool. The rich fool says, oh yes, my, uh, my, my, my soul. You will not be enjoying now. When you see, you see all the pain. Everything is full. Everything is. Uh, I have now. I have two plenty wealth. And my woman of God just said that uh, <laughs> today, today, your life will be demanded uh, from you. And when did that come? Did he say? Uh, did he use the word? You to, to combat the, the angel? Is it not somebody you see you combat? So that Lord will give us understanding, Jesus. Anything that we do. We must do it in the fear of the Lord. Oh, how, how will God take this one if I am back on this one? I'm not saying we should not labor. I'm not saying we should not do any, any manual work. I'm not saying we should not make progress in our offices. But everything that we should do, we should do to the glory of God. Even when we are displaying uh, the God-given wisdom in us, do not let us be carried away by that wisdom and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Then, uh, vanity of listening wisely. That one is a little different from the wisdom I'm talking about. That is, I will, I will, I will just take my first leg after the second leg. I will now move like this. I will now move like this. The, our prayer must always be that if God wills, I will do this one. If God wills, I will do this one. Not that uh, yet. Yeah, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. Then when I when I want to move, I just put one of my legs here. Yeah, 
God be moving like this. It is the, it is the love of God that is in you. That know that you can do what, what you are saying that you do. When that is no longer the, what, what we do. So, vanity of uh, living wisely. Yes. That is when they say, go and look for something, somebody that's what. Yes, you are wise. But don't be carried away by your wisdom. That's what we are talking about. Don't be carried away by your wisdom. Yes, you are the, you are the only one that they contact. Yeah, yes, now making younger to every everybody. Remember that. You have to say that. What is it that we have that was not given unto us? Then the next question is that why are you not behaving as if it has not been given unto you? That is the expression of, of the Bible there. That he acknowledge the giver of that particular thing. You are the one that gave me this widow. You have you are you are the one that gave me. The, the knowledge that I'm prosecuting by Prince with Father, continue to, uh, to continue to endow me with your wisdom and guide me in the execution of this wisdom in Jesus. I think those are the prayers that we have to know that, uh, yes, uh, I'm wise. I'm, I'm a very wise person. I'm a very rich person. By the owner of everything that come, you wouldn't have any excuse. The vanity of toiling, that is why you go there. There are some, although the Bible says that there is a dignity in labor. But when the, when the labor is now distracting you or bring certain other things that you are supposed to do, that is vanity. At the end of the day, you have, you have seen, you have seen, and I believe you have heard too, so many people that will toil and toil and toil and toil, and even upon toiling, they will still die miserably. May the Lord not make us to be one of those people in Jesus' mighty name. But it's not that they are not hardworking. They are very hardworking. They are called for this job. They are there. Call for that one. They are there. Call for this one. They are there. Call for that one. They are there. The Bible will say, Allah Baba Mameru, Baba Ole. Allah Baba Mameru. That is somebody that is very powerful. And he cannot be thoughtful. When he's to use that power or not to use that power, he's, uh, he's miserable. You know, it's very, very lazy. At the end of the day, the two person, the, the one that is not as, uh, as powerful, we just overtake him. Some of us know the, 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 the story of uh, tortoise, tortoise very well. We are not here, we are not in the story story club. So, so for those of us that know the story of tortoise, slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Some people say, ah, if you want to start on you want to run 100 meters, those are the people we are talking about. These are the people that are, that are thinking outside the box. We are saying, that, and I am saying that we must think within the box of these. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter, from chapter 1 to chapter, chapter 12. That now we give us understanding and order our step right in Jesus' mighty name. So, the vanity of toiling, you must, be, you, will, you must make sure that uh, even when you are, some people, when they are toiling, they don't, they don't have time, they don't create time for resting. They don't want to rest because they know that uh, money, every minute comes when they are making money. Every minute comes when they are making money. I pray that we don't make money we will not spend in Jesus' mighty name. So we must understand, we must understand the vanity nature of all, all endeavors in this world. That is the concept of this uh, teaching. We are not saying you should not work, you must work. If I say, he who does not work, you, you, cannot, you must not even eat. That, we are not saying that we must not work, but all work and not play. The English man says, make Jack a dog boy. So that is what we are saying. We have to, we have to really subject ourselves to the dictate of the Lord. And the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Vanity of wealth and honor. Some people, some people will not be happy when we mention this one. Now, it doesn't matter. It's the Bible that says it. Vanity of wealth and honor. That is, the wealth of some people are the source that they will not make a room. May you not be us in Jesus' mighty name. The wealth of some people, the honor of some the, that is according to some people, they are the ones that will not make them to make heaven. May you not be us in Jesus' mighty name. What I, I know I cannot be a governor, I'm not a politician, I cannot be a president, I cannot be a, I'm not a, a politician. But the issue now is assuming I want to go and play my organ in the church, you know, I expect. Uh, Maybe 20, 20 security people follow me. To do what? Well, how, would they, how, would they, how would they stand around me when I want to play my organ for my God? 
So rather than the people like now looking at the work of God through me, they're not looking at the escort. What are you talking about? And whether there's escort or not, we dare not come at a time. They will come. So that's why I said, well, thank God I'm not the governor. I don't think a governor has a secret. What do I mean? There will be at least somebody will be there as the only. So, so that at any given time, even if you say want to live, live a private life, somebody will, will be there. I, mean, I don't like that type of level. I want to have my, <laughs> I want to have my my privacy at all time. I, I want to pray. That, let me pray. Nobody monitoring me. Nobody any guiding me. I, I love it. I love it that way. You know. But when we now say. Oh, I have this one. There will be a time that, you're, that it will not be you that someone's honor will leave him, even whilst he's alive. What are we talking about? Someone's honor may leave him. Even the world, we have, we have, we have, we have seen some people that, 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 that are called Oluwana. Oluwana. It's not that they are dead, though. they are still living. May our story not be that in Jesus' mighty name. And that is what is likely to happen when God has given us wealth, or given us honor, or given us all power, and we are not giving glory to God, and we are not using that wealth, or that honor, or that power to further the kingdom of the Lord. May the Lord give us wisdom and understanding in Jesus' mighty name. And now I have a small warning before I go on that. Death comes to all. And I have my note here. All is. The, the, the upper case, A double L, to all. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you, you, you are highly placed, whether you are lowly placed, even people, even madmen on the street guys, that thing caught across with that. Thank God for death. I used to say, thank God for death. If there's not death in this life, some people will have, will have become so horrible. I don't want to mention the name of people that have lived their, that have lived their world as if they are the Messiah, and at the end of the day, they, they died miserably. The Lord will guide us in Jesus' mind. Death comes to us. And that is a wisdom. That is a wisdom that we must spend our time wisely before the Lord. We must spend our time. In this ministry, we have heard that uh, we are only sojourners in this world. We are only sojourners in this world. Our home place is with our Savior in heaven. And the Lord will give us the wisdom to realize that whether we like it or not, an ambassador cannot refuse to return back home where the home country has called him to come and to come and account for what he has done in the foreign land. That's, that's the type of life we live, and that's the type of life we should be living. That it, death comes to or oh, is the ultimate. Though, where we in theological speaking, death is not the end of everything. Death is only a stepping stone to eternal rest, or what? May, may it not be eternal damnation for us in Jesus' uh, mighty name. So that death on his, death on his own is it, not bad. You know, I don't see anything bad in death. Death is, is, a, tra is a transition. When, when we have watched some uh, uh, obituaries of the same, transition to glory, transition to glory, whether to glory or whatever, that's left for the person that are transited. But at least we are saying transit is a tra that is a transition to the next uh, the next life. If it is to glory, then the person must have worn that work of glory while on earth. If it to the other one, may God deliver us in Jesus' mighty. So death comes to all and we should rise up. Anything that we are doing, in fact, no matter how enjoyable what we are doing currently is, death can come. And then it's that. And you don't have, even if you, even if you want to say no, the, the power to talk, the power to, to struggle will have been removed from you by the owner of your life. The Lord will give you the grace to wise up in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to look at some concepts of in chap, chapter 3 of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 3 that is talking about uh, there is time for everything. There is time for everything. That Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 8, we have, we have, uh, okay, so verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pick up that which uh, 
is planted, is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to and so on and so on to to verse a there. So we must always know that uh, we must not be carried away in any of the time we are passing through. Some people, when they are passing through one challenge, they will think and they we will say from the other oh, they can never get out. And most of people that say that one never got out of that problem because they pronounced it by their own mouth. And God has helped them to sanction it. May I not pro pronounce my premature death by them in Jesus' mind. I'm not, I, I will not die from it prematurely. And I know those of you under the sound of my voice too, you will not die prematurely in Jesus' uh, mighty name. So there is time for everything. And the purpose, everything, there is every purpose for everything under the heaven. Then when you look at the chapter, the same chapter 3, 9 to 15 now, it's talking about some other uh, some other uh, things there. That is God giving tax. That those are the things that it's okay. What profit had he that worked in, in that we are in he labored? That is this labor of a thing you are talking about. What is it? Although you may have profit, that does not mean that you cannot make profit. But apart from making profit, are you making provision for your home in heaven? That if the master comes today, is it not the profit that would that will deny you? The eternal uh, salvation, the Lord will help us in Jesus' uh, mighty name. Also, uh, from dust to dust, chapter uh, verse, verse 16 to 22, make us to know some fundamental thing. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was, was uh, there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquities were there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work, and so and so and so on and so forth. That is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16 to 22. Then, evil under the sun. Evil under the sun. Let's look at uh, let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We'll, maybe two or three of the verses there, verse 5 even. Verse 5. Say something there. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Fully he said, in great dignity, and the rich sit in low places. I have seen servants upon horses and princes working as servants upon the head. <laughs> On this thing must be giving us that we must be thinking very well. We must be not just not just not vain thinking. We must be under the the the, the divine divine uh, wisdom. You know, under divine wisdom at all that. Anytime we are reading any part of the Bible, I want I want us even to to the house of God to give us without to understand the concept that we are about looking at. So even under the sun, Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse five to seven, and I say that. As I'm rounding up this uh, episode of part two, that wisdom is the key. Wisdom is the key. I we have to look at about five points that that says that uh, wisdom is. We still have some other area that confirm the the importance of uh, wisdom, but at least for the purpose of this uh, this uh, part, then we have to look at, at about five. We need divine wisdom for us to understand the spiritual meaning of this subject under consideration. I've mentioned that one. If we don't have the spiritual uh, wisdom, we may not uh, we may not understand. Not like I said, somebody said, "Oh, vanity! This life is vanity." Another person came and said, "If you know it's vanity, why do you buy for God? What are we talking about? Is that what we are talking about for God's sake? That's what we are talking about. We are talking within the context." Of what we have in Ecclesiastes chapter one to chapter chapter twelve, the first one there is wisdom is principal thing. Wisdom is principal thing. Then we look at the book of the proverb. Let's look at the proverb chapter four. We may not be able to read the whole of that thing. Chapter four. If we start from verse uh, verse one, there are ye children, the instruction of a father. Then where you are going, verse 4, 
He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain thy work, uh, retain thy work, keep my commandment. Then let me go to verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You can see that one. Wisdom and understanding. <laughs> they are not the same thing. They are not the same thing, but you, you, are, you, you aspire to get it too. That is, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, in everything that you think you have on that, you must have understanding. If, even if you have wisdom, and if there is no understanding, the, the wisdom may, may turn to folly. If God is not taken. When somebody, because you know how to talk, you are talking everywhere. Even where somebody will just uh, put your your put a padlock on your mouth and you can see visibly but because you know people know that you can talk you are just talking then there's no there's no understanding in that subject that that they're talking so wisdom is the principal thing proverbs chapter 4 verse 1 to 19 i repeat again you must endeavor everybody under the voice or under the sound of my voice must make sure that you read the whole chapter of the book of proverbs from chapter 1 to the last uh, chapter. Even when you finish, start again. When you finish, start again. Then the word of wisdom will be in all. The second point. Uh, the parable of the hidden treasure and the power. That one is taken from uh, Matthew chapter uh, uh, 13, verse 52. Matthew 13, verse 52. You can read that one at the whole uh, uh, spare time. Number three, lay up treasures in heaven. The aftermath of what we are shouting and clamoring for is that all our treasures must be laid up in heaven, not on earth. Lay your treasure in heaven. Matthew chapter, let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, 25. Let's start from 25. I time we get to, let, let's see, let's see if we can get to it. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the hair, for they sow not, neither, they, neither do they reap, nor gather into bath, but yet Heaven, your heavenly Father, uh, feedeth them. Uh, ye not more better than them. But twenty-seven. Which of you, by taking thought, can hard one keep it into a, into a structure? That is a that's a food for thought. Even in the contemporary world, the scientists say that when you have grown to a certain age, is it a twenty-one or so? They call it. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of philosophy. So there's a, around around the church here, you can no longer you have stopped growing. You have stopped uh, you have stopped stop, stop, uh, stop growing. So that's what uh, verse twenty seven talking about. Which of you by taking thought can hard one keep it unto his stature twenty eight? And why take it thought for rain men? Consider the lilies of the of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they speak then. Uh, and so on, and so forth. The Lord will bless us, even as we understand in Jesus' mighty name. The grace of us to lay up our, tre our treasure in heaven, the Lord will give you unto us. Anything that we do, even any wealth we have, we must be thinking of heaven. Any power we want to, to you, we must be thinking of heaven. Any, any honor that is accorded us, we must be thinking of uh, uh, heaven. Any any honor, just like error, any anything that I will that, that, that you will say that will make you to be in conflict with God, may you not say it in Jesus' mighty name. So need not you don't you don't need to worry at all. You don't need to worry. The same book, book of uh, Matthew chapter six twenty five to twenty six. Just do the will of God. By the time we do the will of God, then leave everything to God. Just like my father uh, in the faith, Bishop David Odepo will be saying. Matthew chapter uh, chapter six and verse three is key is key. So, so let, let, let's read it. 
verse 33. Verse 33 says, But seek ye forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. From verse 1, there are the series of things that the scripture is unfolding and unfolding. That's what uh, the scripture in verse 3 says. But seeking for the kingdom of God, and above all these uh, riches, all the things we are looking, we are talking about, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in the word of my father, Bishop, we say, all oh, these other things that people are dying for, people are, are dying to get, then there will be an addition unto us. And so shall it happen to us in Jesus' mighty name. The book of uh, uh, Psalms 90, Psalms 90 and uh, verse, let's look at only one verse there. Psalm 90 and verse, you can look at verse 12. It's an important verse as, we are, as I'm closing today. The, the verse says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. <laughs> this, is an important, this is an important scripture. Almost every, every person uh, on earth is numbering his days. Oh, I'm 51 years today. I'm 20 years today. And I did an analysis to some people. They didn't like it, but there's nothing they can do. They have to accept it. It is a fact. So whether they, I don't I don't I don't bother myself when I'm discussing fact with people and they are struggling with that fact after after some time they will come in time with that reality. I said that in the world and in heaven, by the time you are getting to a certain age, we are happy in the world, they are happy in the world and in the in heaven. Ah, we are happy in both ways. The people in the world are, hey, I'm 21 years today. By next year, I'll be 20. I'll be 22. Today, I'm plus one today. The heaven will record this, oh, thank God, uh, it's minus one today. The two of us are happy. The people in the world are happy. The people, uh, uh, the angels that we welcome you are happy too. You know, people, they, they didn't want to accept that, but it doesn't bother me. That is the reality. That is, teach us to number our days. We are numbering our days. But the second part of that scripture, the second part of that scripture, that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. It is wisdom for us to know that vanity is vanity of this world. And that we have to dedicate our time, our life, our wisdom, our intellect, our being, our all in love to the world of God. The Lord will give us understanding, even to know all this in Jesus' mighty name. Please, don't be carried away. We have but a limited time to spend in this world. What are we talking about? You know, what is limited? What is, uh, what is a limited? Well, whether we like it or not. And I, another analysis that makes some people, you know, at times when I make my analysis, it takes some people some time before they can now understand what I said. There is no one, there is no one that has spent about one hour in the in the calculation of God in this world. There's no one. We are not talking of Methuselah. If we apart from the age, I didn't hear much of what the Nara 69 years was used for. Let, let, let's not bother ourselves. But the in this contemporary world, the one that I know, I think the 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 uh, the, the person that lived longest that I know. Somebody may be may live longer than that. I think it was two or one or two or two that I saw. I didn't see more than that one. When we now look at the timetable of God, and the Bible says that uh, uh, one one watch one watch is in three hours. If by shotgun, three hours. So that is one thousand years. That three hours is just like one thousand years. No, let's not look at it arithmetically, or even want to look at it mathematically. Look at three hours uh, upon one thousand. How many years will will go for uh, the three hours that make up one thousand? So if somebody has now spent two hundred years, even if he spent if he spent a three hundred thirty three years, they can say that uh, he has spent one hour before the Lord. So the Lord is not bothered. You know, and that's why that why you should not be bothered about whether you are alive or you are not alive. We are only to pray that God let me you do your will. And you fulfill your, your plan and purpose in my life. That is that is the thing. So that, that Lord will give us understanding, even to do that one in Jesus' mighty name. 
Teach us, oh Lord, to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. And the same wisdom that the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Eternal Lord, of you bless your name. Because you have released your word again to us. Accept our praise in Jesus' mighty name. The wisdom with which we have to prosecute our assignment in this world, release abundantly upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You have anyone that wants to make it travel with God? You please put your right hand on your chest and say after the Father, I surrender myself unto you, having had your word today and the life of vanity that I've been living. I, I, I pray that you forgive me in the name of Jesus. Count me as one of your own. Every sin that I've committed before now, by your precious blood, forgive me and make me one of your own in Jesus' mighty name. The same grace that led you to give that uh, confession of faith, the same grace will keep you through in Jesus' mighty name. You will never go back to your vomit again in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. For in Jesus' everlasting name, we are praying. Amen.